isn't this great? Not only are we allowed out, we're allowed to come back into church. Absolutely brilliant. And we deliberately held off until Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, a day that we acknowledge as being all about new life. And if ever we wanted God to breathe new life into our world, and yes, definitely into our churches, it is right now. So it is so good that we can be here, be here to celebrate at Easter together. And we can't stay local, and we have, you know, which is great. And you probably don't even realize this, but you are allowed to cross your council boundary if it's for the purposes of worship. So it's just so good that we can all come back together again. This Easter Sunday, we're kind of remembering that it was the day all those years ago that they went to the tomb, expecting to find the stone in front of the tomb, expecting to find it all shut. And they found a totally different event had happened. The stone had been moved, easy enough for me to do that, and knock that away. And the tomb was empty. We come here this morning thinking, great, it's great, we'll have an Easter celebration. But what I want us to do just right at the very start is to pause for a moment and think, hang on, what would it have been like? Because I don't think celebration would have been what they had in mind. So I've got a little clip. If you click it down, Anne. We're not allowed to sing still. Um, so that this will explain what these little flags were for. Because it's Easter Sunday morning, for goodness sakes. And if we can't sing along, we are going to have some songs during the service. And if you feel minded to, you can wave your wee flag as something to celebrate. <laughs> The tomb so cold in Abraham, death and spirit of clay. Mars of hell, they could not hold him back to life again. Christ is risen, death has become. Walter 
Heather to come and lead us in prayer just now. And then before we pray, some verses from another hymn. Now the green blade riseth from the buried grain, wheat that in dark earth many days has lain, Love lives again that with the dead has been. Love is come again like wheat that springeth green. In the grave they laid him, love whom men had slain, thinking that never he would wake again, laid in the earth like grain that sleeps unseen. Love is come again like wheat that springeth green. Let's pray. Lord God, You've made us and you've brought us to this new day, this special day, special in more ways than one this year. And we praise you and we bless you. And we're grateful for a new start, for a new start in our life together as your people, as your children. You are the God who knows the end from the beginning. You are not taken by surprise when things go wrong, when sorrows come to us, when we get into national difficulties, when there are viruses. So we lift up our hearts to you today, Easter Day, because you have lifted up your Son, Christ Jesus, from the dead. We worship you, Lord, because you bring victory out of defeat and joy out of sorrow and hope out of despair and hopelessness. You are the God of resurrection. You're the God of new beginnings. And so we start again today, as every day, with you. And so we ask you, Lord, please to forgive us. Forgive our, us when we are hopeless. Forgive us when we are in doubt, when our faith is feeble when our witness is pathetic, when we let you down. Forgive us and restore us. And today and every day, may your Holy Spirit make us new, make us better people. We ask you to draw us close and fill our hearts with peace and help us all here today to be powerful witnesses to the risen Christ wherever we go. Forth he came at Easter, like the risen grain, he that for three days in the grave had lain. Quick from the dead, my risen Lord is seen. When our hearts are wintry, grieving or in pain, thy touch can call us back to life again. Fields of our hearts that dead and bare have been, love is come again, like wheat that springeth green. And now we'll pray our family prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. I just want to freeze that screen for a minute and we'll leave that on there. So hopefully this will work. I have a few words that I wanted to say for our young people, whether they're in church or whether they're at home, they can watch along with this just now. And I was going to just, I made up a little, one of my little ditties that I tend to do at Christmas time. And I thought, well, come on, Easter, I can surely pull it out for Easter. How are we doing? Yes, that's fine. So it's been a tough year, full of worry and tears. But now it is Easter and it's good to be here. It's still very different. And we still have to ask that you sit well apart and always wear a mask. Our puppets are silent. We're not allowed to sing or give each other hugs and that sort of thing. And when you've got floppy ears, it's quite a hard task to hold up your head while wearing a mask. But today is so special that we just had to come to say thank you to God for sending his son. What he did that first Easter was to set us all free from the hurt and wrongdoing into who we can be by taking the blame for the bad things we've done our old life is gone and a new one's begun a life of encouragement and kindness and love when we stay close to Jesus like a hand in a glove so today we take time out because we need to say a big thank you to God for our resurrection day Thank you, Blizz and Donkey, for coming along to share with us today. It was so good of you to be here, so thank you. <laughs> I'm going to, at this point, normally we'd sing a song. Um, uh, it's a song called Resurrection Day, and it was written by Ian White. Um, we had, we've obviously over the years done our own version of it, and we used to do these things whereby we had actions to it, you know, the the. That we, let me put this down a second, where we would say at the chorus, thank you for loving me, thank you for calling my name. Lord, you have rescued me. Now we can shout, we are saved. However, because we're not allowed to sing, I thought I would give you a real treat. And what we'll actually do is we'll put on um, Ian White singing it himself. So you'll be able to hear what it really should sound like. Um, and maybe I should say, Apologies to Ian White for what we've done to it over all of the years, so I'm going to put it on just now. <clears throat> Let it remind me of the sun in the morning, the 
and our reading today is from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. After the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices to go and anoint the body of Jesus. Very early on Sunday morning at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they said to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? It was a very large stone. And then they looked up and saw that the stone had already been rolled back. So they entered the tomb where they saw a young man sitting on the right, wearing a white robe, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He's not here. He has been raised. Look, here is the place where they put him. Now go and give this message to his disciples, including Peter. He is going to Galilee ahead of you, and there you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and ran from the tomb, distressed and terrified. And they said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. Amen. It has been really quite difficult to get enthusiastic about anything at the moment, because we've been ha having to stay at home. We've been missing seeing our friends. We've even missed going out just for a coffee somewhere, just for a chat and a blether. And it's been a very quiet time at Christmas when we would normally be out celebrating. I guess the children get excited because there's presents to be opened. And then we come to Easter, and, and an Easter egg probably isn't quite the same as whatever gift they were looking forward to for getting at Christmas. And the thing is, normally, we looked forward to holidays. Where can we go? Because although we're not having to stay at home anymore, we do have to stay local. And so it can be hard to feel enthusiastic and excited about anything right now. But we need to understand for those women who went to the tomb on that first, what we would call Easter morning, excitement wasn't anywhere near what they were feeling. They had witnessed the celebrations of Palm Sunday just a week before. That would have been exciting. But what they witnessed when they saw Jesus on the cross was crushing. It was horrific. So when they went to the tomb, not only would they have been heartbroken, they would also have been a little bit anxious. Remember, if we put it in kind of police terms, that they are associates of the accused, if you like. They have been keeping it very quiet during the Sabbath, and now they're coming out, they want to prepare the body. And cemeteries, graveyards, they're not nicest places to be at the best of times. Many years ago, when I was just a teenager, my friend and I were cutting through a cemetery in Perth to get to another friend's house. And as we were walking through, there was a grave that was open. And it had a big board over the top. And of course, we asked the obvious question, is there already a coffin in there? So we decide to go over, it's just at the side after all, and have a wee peep, because there was a gap. And as we leaned across, this great big crow came flying out and squawked at us. I don't think anybody could have kept up with the speed that we ran at that day, okay? Out of there, out of there. For them, they would have been wondering, how are we going to move the stone in the first place? They knew that there was a big stone in front of the tomb. How will we move it? And they were probably hoping that the guards at the tomb would have been kind enough, nice enough, decent enough to give them a hand, just to move it a little bit even so that they could go in and prepare the body. So you need to understand that when they find that the tomb is empty, that Jesus isn't there, they are not immediately thinking, brilliant, brilliant, 
He's back. That's not the first thing that came into their mind. They're not immediately thinking, he'll be back again and we can carry on as normal. And, and, and that's the last thing that was in their mind, even though someone can tell them he's not here, he's risen. That isn't going to compute because for them in those days, exactly as it is for us in this day, dead people stay dead. Okay? It's how it is. They understood that. We understood that. There was a little thing going around on Twitter the other day. It was um, an academic who is also an atheist. And she put on, dead people don't come back. Okay? Unfortunately, she put a wee space in that said, dead people dash don't come back. It made it sound as if she was saying, so just stay away, <laughs> stay away. And it didn't quite have the impact that she probably hoped that it would have. And it has to be said that even in Christian circles, folks can get a wee bit embarrassed by Easter because science tells us, society tells us, education tells us, and experience tells us that dead people stay dead. So these women at the tomb that day weren't standing there thinking, oh, I can feel him close. I know he's nearby. Please don't think for one second that they were having some kind of lovely emotional experience. All kinds of natural thoughts would have gone through their heads. Somebody's stolen the body. What have they done now? What's happened now? What's going on? And the grief that they already felt would have been magnified, but they've been told to go and do something. Go away and tell everybody else that Jesus will come and he'll meet up with you. Would you have believed them? These poor women are so scared that they run off, not wanting to say anything to anyone. But we need to understand what the word resurrection means, what it means now, and what it meant then. It didn't mean some kind of spooky ghost appearing on the scene. It actually meant a physical, bodily coming back to life. Not as in, oh, they've been in a wee coma and they've woken up again. No, no. Resurrection means new life. New life, new creation, if you like. We heard it in the little song, Resurrection Day. And the whole point of this is it was meant to be about new creation. It was meant to be about a new way of being human with lots of new possibilities available now. That's the whole point. This wasn't just something that happened 2,000 years ago in a place that we would call Israel. This is a cosmic event that has changed things and made a difference for all time. It's a transformative event. It can transform lives when we allow the impact of that resurrection to impact upon us. Because what Jesus has done is he's taken on the very power of evil itself, and the biggest evil is death. And by breaking through death and coming out the other side, he is saying, you are now free. But you're free to be the people who you should be, that you can be, the people who live God's way, showing that compassion and love and justice. It's an election time for us here. And we're going to hear all kinds of things about social justice. And we'll have all kinds of promises about we're going to make this better and we're going to make that better. The thing is, what the Lord Jesus Christ did, the reason that we celebrate on, that, on this Easter Sunday is because these things are possible and they're possible with us right now. We don't need a government to tell us. We live it. We live the way that he has been teaching us all these years. 
where other people matter, where other people's needs take a priority. If somebody's hurting, then we hurt too. That's the kind of kingdom that God is talking about. And he's not talking about a way off in a place called heaven. He's talking about here and now, right here. And it's not just one of these cosmic global events that has nothing to do with us, because look at that little line. Now go and give this message to his disciples, including Peter. Why does Peter get a mention? Because Peter, bless him, has always been kind of gung-ho, the first in there. I'll do it. I'll be there until the last. And then when it does get tough, he crumbles and he denies even knowing Jesus. Can you imagine how bad it was watching Jesus on the cross? Could you imagine how bad it would have been if the last thing that you'd done while he was alive was denied even knowing him? Peter would have been so crushed, devastated. And in this huge, big, cosmic, one-time event, God takes time to remember the individual. Tell Peter. God takes time to remember you. Each and every one of you. God has in store for us new life. And sometimes we need to remind ourselves of that because sometimes we stumble and fall, but that's okay. Because of that first Easter, because of Jesus, forgiveness is possible. New life is possible. Moving on into something bigger and better is possible. The events of the death and resurrection of Jesus have already transformed millions of lives. And the promise for us is that he will transform our lives too. And it might not happen overnight, but the possibility is there as we allow the Lord Jesus Christ to impact on our lives just as much as he did on that first Easter day. Now, Daria isn't here with us in church today, but she can be here with us on screen. Prayer for today. Lord of life, risen from the dead, lead us on through fear and astonishment to share in the new work of your kingdom. Amen. Just now we're going to receive the offering. We can't hand a plate around, so that's why there's an opportunity to give at the door. But I am going to get someone to come down and, and bring the offering. Thank you. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of your Son. For that is a gift that has brought new life and possibilities for each and every one of us. We thank you for your continued gifts and blessings in our lives. And we pray that we would know you are close as we come out of this lockdown period and start to see people again. Help us to stay safe. Help us to be sensible and help us to know your presence in our lives. Lord, today we make our gifts to you and we ask that you would accept them and bless them, that we could use them to build your kingdom right here where we are and open up those possibilities of new life for all that we meet, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm going to get Heather to come and say, lead us in our prayers for others. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we remember the disciples, those ones who met the risen Jesus on the road to Emmaus, and how they felt their hearts warmed by contact with him. And Lord, today we feel our hearts warmed. Thank you that with you there's future and hope. And so now we bring to you the needs of the world and people everywhere who need that future and that hope. People who need their hearts warmed by your touch. And so we think of the many situations, Lord, where there is war and suffering of all kinds. We pray for peace. We think of those who are hungry. We hold before you particularly children in Yemen 
suffering so much just now. We think of ruined homes and, and nation, whole nations in Syria and other places. And we think of refugees. And all these things are such big, big needs for us to contemplate. But nothing is too hard for you. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for wise government everywhere. And then we know there are many places where there is no wise government. But we pray for the day when tyrants and oppressors will be no more. Where your kingdom of peace will ultimately reign. And we ask your blessing and guidance on our own government at every level. The Queen in succession, parliaments of the United Kingdom, and Angus Council. We ask, Lord, that they would be guided by wisdom and justice. That they would bring about good order and a way for, towards recovery from the present situation. And again, nothing is too hard for you, Lord. Hear our prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world. Where it's persecuted, Lord, sustain. And where it's in decline or feeble, Lord, please revive. And we think particularly of the Church of Scotland. And we ask that in all things, decisions would be made with generosity and wise judgment. We ask you to bless all the churches here in Forfa as, as they witness to the resurrection and to your love. And we pray that you would reach through them and through us here, every street and shop, every business and school and institution of any sort in this town, because all need to find their hearts warmed by your touch. Use us, Lord, we pray. And what's too hard for us is not too hard for you. Lord, hear our prayer. And we ask, we ask a touch for ourselves. We pray for health for our souls and for our bodies and for peace at night and joy in the morning and a hopeful looking forward to the coming again of Christ Jesus in peace and glory. Amen. So we have one more hymn, and I think it'd be good if we stand. It's Jesus Christ is risen today.
now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you evermore. Amen.